I believe that it's worth considering the possibility of a remote common ancestor, which passed down key information that was inherited by later cultures. I'm willing to accept that the Great Pyramid was largely completed by the ancient Egyptians. But remember that the ancient Egyptians tell us in many of their texts that everything they knew was a legacy. legacy. Imagine stepping back in time, way before the majestic pyramids of Egypt were ever conceived, and finding yourself exploring the Blombos Cave on the southern coast of South Africa. Discovered in the 1990s by Professor Christopher Henshelwood, this cave has turned out to be a treasure trove of artefacts dating back about 100,000 years to the Middle Stone Age, offering a unique glimpse into early human culture. Are we looking at the traces of a forgotten episode in human history? I think so. I think that's, that's what's going on here. The variety of artefacts found in Blombos Cave is nothing short of astounding. Among these treasures are some of the earliest known bone tools. These weren't just rudimentary tools, but were delicately crafted, indicating a high level of skill and an advanced understanding of materials long before similar tools appeared in other parts of the world. The sophistication in these tools suggests that early humans were far more advanced than previously thought. But the artefacts don't stop there. The cave has also yielded pieces of ochre engraved with geometric patterns. Far from being mere decorations, these engravings are believed to represent some of the earliest forms of symbolic communication and abstract art, hinting at the complex cognitive abilities of their creators. There's uh, more and more evidence that cave art that was attributed to Homo sapiens was actually done by Neanderthal. This ability to think abstractly and to plan suggests a significant leap in human cognitive development, often referred to as the cognitive revolution. Moreover, the discovery of shell beads in the cave points to a culture that valued personal adornment and possibly had social or ritualistic practices involving these items. These beads could have been used in necklaces or bracelets, potentially serving as a form of currency or social stratification. When we compare these ancient engravings to the later, more detailed Lascaux cave paintings in France, a fascinating picture emerges. Although the Lascaux paintings, which date to about 17,000 years ago, are more visually complex, the abstract patterns and use of materials like ochre at Blombos may represent an earlier form of the same cognitive evolution towards symbolic thought and communication. This comparison not only underscores the continuity in human artistic endeavors, but also highlights the depth and richness of human creativity from its very beginnings. These findings from Blombos Cave challenge our previous assumptions about prehistoric humans and provide deep insights into the evolution of human cognition, artistic expression, and social structures. They paint a picture of a complex, nuanced society engaged in sophisticated practices and thought processes long before many other known civilizations. Let's travel from the ancient ingenuity displayed in South Africa's Blombos Cave to another fascinating archaeological site, Katalhoyuk in south-central Turkey. Discovered by James Mellart in the late 1950s and later excavated by Ian Hodder, Katalhoyuk has been a goldmine of information about Neolithic urban life, dating back between 9,500 to 7,700 years ago. Covering about 32 acres, Katalhoyuk isn't your typical ancient city. The settlement was incredibly well planned, with houses made of mud bricks built so close to each other that the roofs served dual purposes. Ceilings for the dwellings they topped and terraces for the adjacent upper levels. This unique architectural style suggests a highly organized society with no clear signs of social stratification, which is pretty unusual for such an early form of urban development. The residents of Katalhoyuk had a vibrant cultural life as evidenced by the elaborate frescoes adorning the walls of their homes. These murals, which are among the earliest known examples of narrative art, depict detailed hunting scenes and vultures, providing a window into the community's beliefs rituals and the environment around them. Religion appears to have played a central role in daily life at Katalhoyuk. This is indicated by the numerous figurines and shrines, 
unearthed during excavations, with a notable prevalence of female symbols and figures suggesting potentially matrifical elements in their social structure. One of the most intriguing theories about Catalhoyuk is that it might have been an egalitarian society. The uniformity in house size and communal living arrangements support the idea of a proto-communist social order where there wasn't a significant emphasis on social hierarchy. This is further backed by the absence of grand tombs or palatial structures, which are usually indicative of pronounced social stratification. These comparisons not only highlight the diversity in how early urban societies could be structured and function, but also enrich our understanding of human social evolution. As we delve deeper into these ancient cities, we continue to uncover how our ancestors lived, worked and formed communities, providing valuable insights into the past that shape our knowledge of human history. The story of the Derinkuyu underground city in Cappadocia, Turkey, reads like something out of a fascinating mystery novel, complete with accidental discoveries and architectural wonders. It's really important to understand that archaeology um, is often driven by accidental finds. Located in a region celebrated for its unique geological features, particularly the soft volcanic rock that has been easily sculpted for millennia, Derinkuyu is the largest of the many underground cities carved into this landscape. Our tale begins in 1963, when an ordinary homeowner in Derinkuyu, known only to a few, decided to make some home improvements. Little did he know that knocking down a wall in his basement would open a door to the past. Behind the wall was a passage that led to a complex network of rooms and tunnels extending deep beneath the earth. What the homeowner had discovered was not a simple series of rooms, but an elaborate subterranean city that stretched down as much as 85 metres and included at least 18 levels. This ancient city wasn't just a refuge, it was a fully functional community with everything from homes and communal gathering places to schools, places of worship and tombs. When local authorities were alerted to the find, archaeologists rushed to explore this underground marvel. They were astounded to discover that Derinkuyu could have supported as many as 20,000 people along with their animals and stored food. The city's design was remarkably sophisticated with ventilation shafts that ensured fresh air could reach even the deepest levels, similar to modern day air conditioning systems. The city's architecture suggested that its creators were not only skilled builders, but also clever strategists. Massive stone doors could be rolled across passageways to seal off the city from invaders, and narrow tunnels would have forced any intruders to enter in single file making them easier to defend against. Derinkuyu's design is often compared to the labyrinth of Minos from Greek mythology, intended to confuse or trap unwanted guests with its complex layout and her minimal exits. This feature, along with its ventilation and security measures, highlights a level of planning and engineering that parallels the sophistication of certain modern infrastructures. The Altamira Cave, nestled in the picturesque Cantabria region of northern Spain, was brought to international attention in 1879 by Marcelino Sanz de Sotuola, who famously declared that its stunning cave paintings were of prehistoric origin. This initial claim faced a great deal of scepticism, but was eventually verified, proving the paintings to be an astonishing 36,000 years old, dating back to the Upper Paleolithic period renowned for their vivid depiction of wild mammals and human hands. The paintings of Altamira are celebrated for their vibrant polychrome techniques. Artists of the time utilized an impressive palette created from charcoal, ochre, and hematite to produce colors ranging from deep blacks and yellows to rich reds. These pigments were not just randomly splashed on, but were applied meticulously with tools like fingers, fur pads, or flint tools, pointing to a sophisticated understanding of materials and methods. The subjects of these paintings, mainly bison, horses, and boars, are portrayed with a remarkable sense of movement and dimensionality that is rarely seen in other Paleolithic art. This dynamic portrayal suggests that these creatures were not only important food sources, 
but also held a significant place in the cultural and spiritual life of the people. The detailed depiction of their anatomy and behaviour reflects a deep observational skill and suggests that the artists were highly knowledgeable about their subjects. The realism and artistry of Altamira's cave paintings, especially the famous bison scenes, highlight the painters' extraordinary skills and their keen eye for detail. Some scholars believe that these paintings were used in rituals or shamanistic practices aimed at ensuring a successful hunt or invoking animal spirits, indicating that the cave might have been a place of great spiritual importance. Altamira's artists mastered the art of creating depth and movement through adept shading and contouring, focusing more on realism and possibly the spiritual connection between the human and animal worlds.